Welcome back YouTube, VST here at SPS Tech and I have here my Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and I wanted to talk about the adaptive battery. I'm testing since yesterday running my phone without the adaptive battery and what can I tell you guys, it really runs better. So in this video I want to deep dive a bit more into what exactly adaptive battery is and what is the Samsung implementation and why I do believe that without the adaptive battery and with another setting I finally can get smoother One UI. For me, One UI smoothness was never the problem, the animations were never the problem, the execution is the problem and the consistency. But what does consistency mean? In my case, if I do an action 10 times and 6 times out of 10 I get a nice animation, no stutter, no lag, but the other 4 times it's sluggish, then that's a problem with consistency. Consistency means, and that's the way I think, if I do something 10 times I would rather get like 9 perfect animations out of 10. And adaptive battery has to do something with this and also other settings, but let's just deep dive a bit more into what exactly is adaptive battery, when did it come out, how did Samsung implement it, and then I wanna switch over to my phone and show you the two settings I modified that will get me some better performance. And if you're here for the first time, guys, you might as well want to subscribe for the channel. Now let's buckle up and start. Let's now check some of the historical data. Android 9 or Android Pie was released in 2018, four years ago, and it introduced a new battery management feature, the adaptive battery. Depending on the user's use of the application, the system will restrict certain mechanisms for the application. This was a new feature on Android 9, everybody was so happy. The system prioritizes the use of resources on the frequency of use of application and their recent date of use. The system prioritizes the use of resources on the frequency of use of application and their recent date of use. The way it's implemented, guys, is using these five buckets. Active, so let's say it's Telegram, I use it every day. Then we have working set, the application is used frequently but is not always active. And then we have frequent, the application is used frequently but not necessarily daily, where and then also never. So based on these five buckets, the adaptive battery was trying to decide what is really best for you. If you're using an application, it will probably reside in your memory, the system will not kill it, but if you use an application once in a while, then the adaptive battery will kick in and try to reduce all the background activities like sending and receiving data, like toggling GPS, like using Wi-Fi, using mobile network. This is kind of the idea of the adaptive battery. Then of course, what's behind the adaptive battery? It's artificial intelligence. So the algorithm is based on AI and it's likely that this learning phase will take several days. So you take your phone, you switch the adaptive battery and then the phone will try to understand the usage pattern. So what are the top most used applications from you on a daily basis and what are the applications that you use rarely or seldom. However, many applications will likely be assigned to the frequent bucket or the rare one. And this is actually these two buckets. System applications like Google applications, Maps Cabra will probably be in working set while the usual applications, bank travel may be classified as frequent. And that's actually what also has happened to my Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. Some of my banking apps went somehow into deep sleep, although I use them once in a while. The implementation of the algorithm will also depend on the smartphone manufacturer. And guys, this is how we just take this now from Google and bring it over to Samsung. This has been published here on Samsung website on the 23rd of November. What is adaptive battery and why it's a new feature? And again, they're just clarifying that Android 9 released this new feature. Adaptive battery works by learning your usage pattern for various applications and allow the apps you use regularly to stay in memory after you exit them. Also, apps that you use rarely are killed as soon as you exit them so that they will not run in the background and waste the battery life and Wi-Fi and mobile data. Based on this algorithm, if you have applications on your Samsung smartphone that are not used in the last three days, yep, they might end up into the D-Slip app. And of course, the good thing is you can go inside and just set a delay and changes, but you may not receive notifications. Now, at this point of time, guys, you're just wondering, but how does this relate to the smoothness of my phone and the UI. I checked 9 to 5 Google and I did also check Android Authority and I just found the same information. Listen, that's important. Reducing performance to save power. One way to improve battery life is to reduce your phone's performance. While this change often isn't drastic or even barely noticeable, reducing the performance that your processor runs can dramatically increase the battery life of your device because chips take a lot of power and if that power is slightly limited, your battery can save itself a lot of drain. And we always need to think, guys, 
performance means heat heat is not good for the battery because it will decrease so the more powerful is our performance the more heat is going to be generated hence the battery will drain faster so what do we know until now adaptive battery will not only limit the applications that you're not using so often on your phone putting them into this slip or whatever but it will also reduce the performance in order to save battery and this is how it's connected to the one UI and to the smoothness and to the stutters and to the luck and now guys i'm going to take my phone and show you how to unset this this all started yesterday i was having a chat with this person from telegram i don't know really the nickname but thank you very much for the tip he was suggesting to me sir just try adaptive battery turn off my lux stutters are gone adaptive battery is a culprit and use it for one day you'll feel more smoothness consistent animation and frames stability improvement and etc so i said okay why not guys so what i did i went inside my settings i just typed battery and device care and eventually guys i landed up into the adaptive battery so for you to access it you can also go inside your settings you can just scroll here to the battery and device care once you're inside click here the battery and then just go for more battery settings the first one that you can see is the adaptive battery extend battery life based on your phone usage i disabled that and i started to use my phone in general with one ui5 my phone performs quite nicely so i don't really have these lags but they occur once in a while but you know i scratched my head and i was thinking what is the most nasty situation and the most nasty situation is when i'm not using my phone for let's say 30 minutes or an hour then i go inside guys i go inside an application and i attach something i said in over and it lags like crazy but i decided to take things one step further so i am now back in my device care i go here inside my battery settings i go to the more battery settings and then i click onto the processing speed the default one is the optimized one which is suited really for most of the situations as it balances speed with battery and cooling efficiency and this processing speed is also samsung implementation on the adaptive battery and combining it with the performance of your phone but i was also thinking guys if i'm using optimized right this will really balance the speed with battery which means also reduce performance and you know what guys with processing speed set to high and with the adaptive battery set to off i can leave my phone for hours then immediately just go somewhere open an application try to adjust something guys and it will work in most of the times without any 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 stutter and i can show you, it's really really doing a great job guys and this is no placebo so i really do believe if you want to get better performance less luck and less stutter then you just need to switch off the adaptive battery and the good news is guys if you use processing speed too high and without the adaptive battery you will not really lose a lot of your battery so again you need to make this compromise do you want to have maybe five percent more of your battery which translates to like what 10 15 minutes more screen on time or you want to have a more balanced experience you know without all the lags and without all the stutter that we are really used to get from one ui and right now guys i do believe that this is a solution it's not let's say the complete solution right but it is still a solution to the stutters and the lags that we have so again i just want to thank this guy so much for bringing my attention back to this topic because i was testing this once in a while but i really was thinking yeah maybe nothing drastic but right now i do believe that this really makes a huge impact try it out try it out and let me know what you think down below in the comments with that said vst over and bye